Hey, how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you've seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we're going to see what if Naruto got in a harem with Hasbun Hotel Girls. This is part one. And before getting into video, I request you to check the author of this fanfic and show some love and support. Name of the story is Welcome to Heaven by Neons and Gets to do check it out. All details and description. And if you want next part of this series, please leave a like, share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Also check out Patreon for uncensored spicy content. Link in description. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Can you tell me where I am? I don't know how I got here, but I think I'm starting to understand. I don't belong among the angels. And baby, that's just fine with me. The things I did down there were high school, but now I'm going for my degree. Rise and shine. Who turned on the lights? Because it was bright in here. Too damn bright for his liking by half. Naruto creaked an eye open as his world lurched back with a start. He immediately wished it hadn't, because the very fiber of his being ached in the worst of ways, as though his every cell had been dipped in acid and summarily set on fire for good measure. The pain was everywhere, everyone, everything, a gaping void inside him ready to swallow everything whole, should he let it. Breathing became an effort and his back bowed in pain as he curled in on himself clutching his head against the ringing in his ears, gritting his teeth against the existential agony currently consuming him. He flared his chakra and stamped it down into the dark corner of his mind. It fought him tooth and nail the entire way, but he managed to cage it nonetheless. From there, he finally managed to wrangle enough of his senses to take stock of his surroundings. He found himself sprawled out on his back in a strange room of some sort, an unadorned yet still brightly resplendent ceiling greeted his gaze. Trying to move soon proved to be an exercise in futility. He barely had the strength to turn his head, much less breathe. Where was he? The last thing he remembered was. Was. Was what? Exactly? Well, that was a problem. He was too darn tired to move, too. His strength was returning, albeit slowly. Racking his brain, he struggled to recall something, anything really, that might bring some small semblance of sense to this situation. All right, calm down, Naruto. You're fine. It's just really bright here. Wherever here is, focus. The last thing I remember is, S-A-S-K. He'd fought him, blown his arm off, and been run through for it. A flickering memory tugged at him, collapsing on the ground beside him, bleeding out, darkness creeping into his vision. Numbness. Mm. Excuse me. A soft voice intruded upon his thoughts. Are you all right? You've been laying there a while. Is there anything I can do to help? Shock lent him strength he didn't know he had. He jolted upright and came face to face with a slim, freckle-faced young woman clad in a periwinkle white yet purple dress. Wow. She looked like a princess in that getup. Despite her regal attire, she looked about as startled to see him as he was her. Her skin shone like silver snow thoroughly complimenting her long thigh-length hair and rather messy bangs. Her eyes were a lovely light blue, framed by dark lashes. But perhaps most noticeable of all were the six white wings sprouting from her back, three to each shoulder. Lastly, he noticed the telltale halo hovering just over her head. His mind fizzled out spectacularly. Hi, I'm Emily. A bright smile tugged at her lips as she chirruped happily. Though, you can call me Em. Emmy, e even, she flailed her hands when he didn't answer. Whatever you want, I go by whatever. Naruto, he found himself giving his name, unbidden. Naruto then, it's so nice to meet you. She took hold of his hands and babbled right on over him. I can't remember the last time a soul appeared before one of us directly like this. You must have been exceptionally good while you were alive. Or powerful. Hm. Her head tilted a touch to the left as she placed a finger to her chin. Maybe both? When he was alive? He barely heard her over the ringing in his ears. <clears throat> Emily pressed her head to his chest, listening despite his panic. You have a strange heartbeat. That's new. I've never met an angel quite like you. Angel. Stop. Think. Focus. He had to regain control of this conversation. Hello, he managed, marshalling his thoughts. It's nice to meet you. Can you tell me where I am? I don't know how I got here. But a small part of him was starting to understand. The girl's cherubic smile faded in the face of his query. 
but only for a moment. I'm sorry. Releasing his hands, she stepped back and clasped both palms over her stomach. I'm sure this comes as quite the shock. Usually you would have appeared before the pearly gates, Buit. His thoughts began to unravel as she trailed off into a nervous giggle. Pearly gates? Yup. Her head bobbed. Here, I'll show you. Come with me. Emily offered him her hand like the pure soul she was, and numbed, he took it and allowed her to lead him out the room, out the door, then outside. If he'd thought the world bright before, it was downright blazing now, so much that he had to look away at first. But once his vision cleared, welcome to heaven, Emily swept out a hand before her. You're new, so I'll spare you the song this time. Naruto blinked. He blinked hard. Sunny skies? Check. Pulley gates? Check. Wings on his back. Que no just a minute. He whirled and craned his neck over his shoulder, realizing what had been itching him for the better part of five minutes now. The part he was too distracted to notice, until she pointed it out. There was a weight there now, one that hadn't existed prior. He couldn't see them, not completely, not properly, but now he was very much aware of them. They were, well, quite large actually. His shoulder muscles twitched in stress and unbidden. So too did his new appendages. And was it just his imagination? Or did he have more than two wings? Oh, my sweet father. Would you look at those? Emily squealed in sudden delight, confirming his concern. This is even better than I thought. You didn't just ascend here after dying. You were reborn. You're well new. Something about the way she said the word caused his right ear to twitch. But try as he might, he couldn't muster an angry response when faced with that innocent smile. You're incredible. Something sour stirred within him as he let go of her hand and turned away. Not feeling incredible. You should. She rounded on him and took him by the sleeve, tugging him back to her as she began to babble again. I've never seen someone reborn as a seraphim out of the blue this. We haven't had one in years. No, wait, you have more wings than me. So what does that make you? Hold on a second, let me count. Quick as a sunbeam, she darted behind him and began poking and prodding, counting and cooing. Numb, he let her. One, two, this wasn't happening. Three, four, it couldn't be happening. Five, six, he couldn't be dead. Seven, eight, he just couldn't be. Nine, eight, and ten, she finished with a happy chirrup. That's amazing. Even Sarah doesn't have that many. She'll be delighted to meet you. Naruto scarcely heard her as his heart hammered in his chest. He had ten wings, the exact same number of the ten tails. And he couldn't hear Karama, couldn't feel him. In his partner's place, he felt a mighty presence that both was and was not him, powerful, yet foreign all the same. Even a blonde man could have made the connection. Here, look, Emily conjured a mirror. Where had she gotten that? between her palms and held it out for him. See for yourself. He accepted the looking glass with trembling fingers and nearly spat a curse at what he found there. It was his face all right, but he was changed. He still retained his whiskers and piercing blue eyes, but his once blonde hair had gone quite white and, and the dusky pallor of his skin was eerily akin to hers. Which meant he started hyperventilating, breath coming in short gasps. No, no, no. The world, heaven, slipped through his fingers. His vision swam, and he fainted. Zero, zero, zero. Dark eyes opened. His skull absolutely ached. Where in the hell am I? A smiling shadow fell over his form. An apt choice of words, my good fellow. Zero, zero, zero. Reality reasserted itself in a rush. Naruto heard voices as he came to. Fragments of conversation in the dark. Some didn't sound best pleased. He heard a strange slurping sound. I'm just saying, what kind of angel faints? Fucking coward. Someone coughed. I concur, sir. No angel worth their salt would collapse like that. So what are we waiting for? Let's kick him out and... And what? Give him to Lucifer? I think not. I ain't saying that. Cease. That's quite enough, Adam. Phythian, I'm sorry. Happy now? Not like he can even hear me. I can actually... Through blurry vision, he beheld an eclectic band of what he could only assume were angels crowded around him. Well, well, look who's awake. Rise and shine, sleepyhead. 
First and foremost, he glimpsed a rather eccentric-looking individual clad in absurdly long white robes, the latter festooned with strange blue marks, an odd A on his chest, and outrageous golden sleeves. His wings were a noticeable shade of gold and… was that a horn mask he was wearing? He hoped so, because if it wasn't, that was the strangest angel he'd seen. And he'd seen a few strange things. The grin he wore more a sneer, really, didn't exactly endear him to his cause either. By contrast, the young woman standing beside the colorful one looked even less kind. Not only did she favor colors of gray and silver, but her wings were an odd white-black near the edges, further contrasting her already somewhat pallid complexion, piercing golden eyes, and pale hair. A black halo sat atop her head with a spoke run through it, tilting a little now as she inclined her head to regard him. He didn't like the look in her eyes. It wasn't cold. He could deal with cold. No, her gaze was zealous, fanatical callous. Look at him quivering, sir. Her lips pursed in a scowl as she planted a fist on her hip. He's clearly an aberration. Perhaps it would be best if we purged him. And, just like that, he had an instant dislike for this woman. Wait, she'd said something about purging just now. Purging someone. Purging him. Another rush of emotion coursed through him. Not panic, but anger, searing white hot in his veins. He flung himself off the bed, and his new wings responded accordingly to his fury. They unfurled behind him in response to his sudden stress. All ten of them at once. The sudden release of blinding brilliance buffeted both the broad and the bastard backward, hurling them against a wall with an audible crunch. He barely noticed. Huh. Here at last, he finally caught a proper glimpse of his new appendages in all their gilded glory. So that's what they look like. Not only were a bright feathered gold, replete with shining sunlight, but they were large. They felt strong, powerful, ready to be used. There was more to it than that. He knew how to use them, as thoughty knowledge had been there all along. He flexed the muscles in his back, and they answered the call, creating a might downdraft to rustle his hair. It felt good. It felt natural. It felt right. A small tentative smile bloomed across his whiskered face. Maybe this wasn't so bad after all. Alas, the masked man recovered and got up in his face. What's wrong with you? Right, callous bastard and his bitch trying to get him killed. Should probably deal with that. He didn't want to die twice. Me. He all but spat the word, leering back at him. Your friend over there was talking about killing me just now. Did you expect me to take that lying down? A flicker of uncertainty crossed the man's mask before he rallied. Would you believe me if I said it was just a joke? His temper sparked into an inferno. If you call that a joke, then you've got a twisted sense of humor. Say that again, punk. I dare you. Nardo, step forward. Calm yourself, Seraphim, and be welcome. A dusky hand settled on his shoulder before his rage could lunge forward and slug the bastard. You're in no danger here. He whirled and found someone who looked an awful lot like an older version of Emily looming over him, silent, slender, and stern. As though sensing that very thought, the smaller seraphim in question poked out behind her and granted him a johnny wave. Unbidden, he found himself returning it. His anger returned as he glared at her. Sister? Mother? He couldn't tell. Aren't I? He stared heatedly at her. Sure feels like it. For that, you have my most heartfelt apologies. She smiled at him and touched a hand to her collarbone. The gesture almost felt sincere. Almost. Then her gaze cut across the room, regarding the still-recovering female angel who had so senselessly insult him before and her words caused him to reconsider. He is one of us, Lute. You will not speak ill of him. The now-named woman clicked her tongue and looked away, a hot flush creeping up her face. Yes, ma'am. And you, Adam, the seraphim, fixed him with her steely stare next. I expect better of you. The colorful angel wilted. Yeah, yeah, sure. He didn't sound sincere. I'll do better. All right, breathe. Calm down. He held on to his anger a moment more and let it go. His wings tucked themselves down against his back and he felt them recede, ready to be called upon at a moment's notice should he so desire. Emily flitted over to his side with that irresistibly innocent smile smile of her, and he felt his spirits lighten just a little. See? She nudged him. What did I tell you? Isn't Sarah just awesome? 
She was certainly something. Now then, she turned a motherly smile on them both. Why don't you both apologize and let bygones be bygones? Now it was Naruto's turn to bridle. Apologize? What'd it have to apologize for? Emily sided with him. Bless her. Sarah, he didn't do anything wrong. Reborn though he may be, he did attack Adam. In fear for his life, Adam saw the moment and seized on it, rolling his shoulder. Yeah, man, you gave me a bruise. Bullshit. This guy was lying out his ass. That no good cheeky Sanuva. Breathe. Don't give in. Be the better man. The righteous fury in him wanted to shout and swear and sunder, but he could feel Emily staring at him. Emily, who had been so kind, so hospitable, so nice from the moment he first set foot into heaven. Fine. I'm sorry if you are. Reluctantly, he turned back to face the aggravating, arrogant angel. And you are who, exactly? Adam, father of humanity, rock star, an all-around badass. The lunatic flicked a finger gun his way. Plisuras mine. Naruto eyed the hand, baffled by his brutish behavior. I've never heard of you. The masked man absolutely twitched. Really? I'm a pretty big deal. Nope. He forced a smile he didn't feel. So you're an angel? The very best. His brow furrowed. That didn't make any sense. Weren't angels supposed to be good? Emily undoubtedly was, and Sarah seemed the same, but loot, and especially this guy. There was something wrong with him. He could still sense emotions, negative or otherwise. And what he sensed right now smelled like a rotten pile of sludge curdled with expired milk and spiced with balsamic. Why does your soul stink? Sarah slapped a palm to her forehead. Oh dear. Adam's smug smile died an ugly death, drenched itself in gasoline, and set itself on fire. Excuse me? You heard me. Something was awake deep inside of him now, and it would be held back no longer. You reek. How are you up here? A host of complicated emotions flashed across the angel's mask. There, and gone in an instant, until only anger remained. You want to go, newbie? Sorry, I'm not in a jerks. The words escaped him before he could think to hold them back. But I'll kick your ass to kingdom coming back again if that's what you want. Loot buelled forward with fury. How dare you? Quiet you. He chopped her over the head, casually causing her to bite her tongue. I'm in no mood for another fangirl. I got enough of those dealing with SASK. Adam puffed up. You dissing my posse? Well, they clearly lack taste. That's it. Out came Adam's wings, his face twisting in fury as he jabbed a finger up under his chin. I don't give a rat's ass who you are or how many wings you have. I'm top dog around here, and you better cut that shit out real quick because by the sage did this guy ever shut up? The itchy feeling returned tenfold, honesty incarnate. All filters removed, an open wound aching to lash out. It might have been the loss of Karama, the realization that he was dead, or any other number of factors that drove him to do what he did next. Either way, the result was the same. All I hear is a yappy little chihuahua barking for attention. Lute's jaw clicked open. Emily gasped. So how about kid? Adam. He sensed danger and twisted his head aside just as the first man thrust a hand forward. Not a moment later, a searing beam of light perforated the space his skull had occupied a second before. It drilled into the wall and left a smoking crater behind. Naruto flicked a glance toward it and shrugged. You missed. I ain't gonna miss again. You snarky little silver tongue piece of SHI. Enough! Sarah pushed her way between them. Wings flared. Boys, please. There's no need for this. We're all angels here. She cast a meaningful glance his way a plea for contrition. I'm sure our new friend didn't mean what he said. Naruto pursed his lips. No, I definitely did. How in the hell is that an angel? He's the literal opposite of one. Adam sprang to his feet, teeth bared. Oh, that does it whiskers. It is on like Donkey Kong. Naruto blinked. Donkey who now? Dude, I'm ancient, and even I know that reference. You've been living under a rock or something. Another dig at him, being dead. He had spirit if nothing else. He would have liked this guy if he wasn't such an asshole, no. In that moment, he knew they would never get along, not until the death of the universe. There was too much bad blood between them now, too much for even him to consider giving him a second chance. Short of a miracle, it just wasn't happening. 
Funny you should mention rocks. He cracked his knuckles. Because I'm about to put you under one. Adam's forehead slammed against his with vigor. Not if I get you first. Emily tried to interpose herself between them. Bless her. Wait, quiet, pip squeak. Adam brushed her aside. So, how we doing this? Naruto set his jaw and planted his feet. Loser has to do anything the winner says. Adam's grin told him he'd blundered. Worse for me. If I win, you're cleaning the toilets for the next three months. Was that it? Doesn't sound so bad. With your tongue, his right eye twitched. You're just a special class of ass, aren't you? And if I win? Adam sputtered. You won't, pal. He pressed him. But if I do? Dude, you're a newborn angel. Doesn't matter how many wings you go, you're probably weak as shit. Was he? He didn't feel weak right now. If anything, he felt powerful. Stronger than he'd ever been. Then why are you so afraid to fight me? I ain't. Sarah heaved a sigh that shook her slim shoulders. Humor him, Adam. The sooner we get this nonsense over with, the better. Yes, yeah, sure, whatever. Fine. The so-called angel rounded on him. Teeth bared. If I lose then, what? You want me to peg you or something? Naruto absolutely gagged as his face blazed red. For a moment, he could have sworn every other anger in the room did the same. Not a chance. He slammed his arms together in the distinctive shape of an X at him. Not in a million years. What then? Adam clicked his tongue and smirked. Too afraid to think of something? He racked his brain for ideas. One came to him. When you lose. If I lose, and that's a big if. You have to be nice. Adam gagged. And? That. And you give me charge of these subordinates of yours. He jerked a thumb back at Loot, who squawked indignantly. They're clearly in need of a proper leader. Not some overgrown brat like you. Adam looked like he'd asked him to cut off his arm. Hand over my exorcist to you? Not a chance. Pick something else. He quirked a brow at him. Chicken? Hey, don't you dare. When Naruto flapped his arms and made poultry noises. Why you little? You're going down? A shit-eating grin split his face. Something burned bright in him. It almost felt like pride mingled with wrath. We'll see about that. Sarah thrust herself between them with the look of a woman who wanted to strangle them both. Do the two of you agree to these terms? Yup, slash sure. Very well. This way. With a long-suffering sigh, she led them outside to a secluded cloud bank away from the promenade and prying eyes. At a glance, it didn't seem like anything to write home about. Just a cushion of surprisingly solid clouds nestled beneath the warm rays of the sun. Upon closer inspection, he realized there was a weight to this place, a gravity that he couldn't quite define. Adam paraded about, grinning like he owned the damn place. Naturally. Nice. Good choice, Sarah. I miss my old stomping grounds. An ember of anger sparked in him. Had this happened before? Had other souls challenge Adam before? Had victory goes to whomever forces the other to yield. Sarah's voice cut through his thoughts like a burning sword. She looked between them, eyes blazing. Emily and I will be watching the both of you. Any attempt to do so kill will result in immediate disqualification. Are we clear? Naruto nodded. Crystal. Adam waved her on. You want a weapon? Weakling? Bastard. Nah, I got my own. Hopefully. He wasn't sure if he could conjure his staff here. Adam conjured a strange golden weapon that seemed to be a cross between a guitar and a battle axe. One way to find out. Emily touched his hand, stalling him. Nardo, please. She gazed up at him with her bright, soulful eyes. You don't have to this right now. It's only your first day of heaven. I don't want to see you get hurt. He bridled at the insinuation. Don't she? She thought he was in danger. Nonsense. He was the danger. But that darn pout of hers, so innocently pure, weakened his resolve once more. Maybe he'd overstepped. He wasn't feeling entirely himself at the moment. It was more than righteous fury spurring him on, but the loss of Karama and his own death were gnawing at him, leaving him feeling hollow inside. Maybe a bit of rest would do him some good. They could always settle this in the morning if he still felt the same. He took a breath, shook his head, and made to walk away. Maybe you've got a point. Emily chirruped, simultaneously surprised and delighted. I do. You do. We don't have to do this right now, Adam. He looked to the scowling angel. Let's wait until morning. 
Sarah seemed oddly pleased with the choice because she actually smiled and granted him a nod. That sounds acceptable. There's no need to fight at this very moment. Perhaps we should let cooler heads prevail. Lute scoffed. Naruto turned his back on her and paid her all the attention she was due, which was to say none. Right up until Adam got the last word in with a sneer. Backing down now, are we? Looks like you're the one who's all bark and no bite. I'd bet my halo you died a coward's death. Didn't you? He did not just say that. The entirety of heaven momentarily dimmed as Naruto froze in mid-step. Sarah, Emily, and even Lute looked up, eyes wide, terribly startled by the display. He didn't see their reactions. His attention was decidedly elsewhere. A muscle jumped in his jaw, pounding alongside a throbbing vein in his temple as his wings howled back into existence behind his back. All the anger he'd struggled to contain came roaring back in a red tide that swallowed all thought, all sense, all sanity. He couldn't see his own eyes, it just wasn't possible, but here in this moment, they blazed a bright holy gold as he craned his neck back to regard the arrogant angel with a scowl. For words parted his lips. What did you say? Adam scoffed and made a show of inspecting his weapon. Huh? You dumb and dead? I said you're a little chicken shit. So I said, Adam, for once in your life, be quiet. What? It's not an insult if it's true. His head snapped to the side as clenched knuckles barreled into his face at light speed. It was a very good punch Naruto felt. Powerful, poised, and perfect. His chakra-filled fist smashed into that bastard's helmet with a dull crunch and sent the arrogant angel tumbling down to the clouds. The moment Adam fell, he lunged at him, tackled him, and pinned him there. So began the barrage. One punch, two punch, three punch, for punches followed, rapid strikes hammering into the older angel's gut. He rather liked the sounds he made. So he kept swinging, beating him down bit by brutal bit. Someone was shouting behind him, but he never knew who couldn't hear anything over the roaring in his ears. He linked both hands over his head and brought them crashing down on Adams instead. In hindsight, it was too much to hope that would knock him out. Should have known better. Arrogant blowhard though he was, he was sturdy as they came. With a snarl, Adam flared his wings and bucked, hurling him away shattering the red haze in his mind. You think you're hot shit, don't you? Not really. He shrugged a shoulder. Just better than you. It was the wrong thing to say. Adam lunged at him, swinging for the fences. He gave ground with a frown and let the axe sweep over him, past him, aside from him. Even then his steps felt stilted. Awkward. He wasn't used to the weight of these wings on his back. They threw off his balance, his coordination. He dodged Adam easily enough, but he couldn't get a beat on him. His angelic body was stronger, but he couldn't move the way he wanted. Stranger still, he had a hell of a time trying to summon his staff to his hand, and then he misstepped. Adam took full advantage to slash at his face. Game over rookie. His entire body tensed, and all ten of his wings swung as one to block the blow, stopping it cold. Naruto blinked. Adam balked. What the shit? Emily tilted her head just so. He can do that? I can do that. Naruto echoed her sentiment in full-throated disbelief. Adam hauled back and swung, only to find himself forestalled once more by the heavenly raiment. Here at last, he glimpsed a flicker of fear in the man's cracked mask. Relief was sweet, it was heady, and it lent him a strength he never knew he had. I can use these as weapons? A grin split his face. Well, right then, Adam swore. Crap, a golden wing smacked the first man upside the head, even as a second swept his legs, opening him up to a third to strike him in the gut, folding him clean in half across the feathered appendage. That's right. These are extensions of my body. They respond to my muscles, to my will, which means I can probably. He deflected Adam with one wing, battered him back with another, and poured chakra through three more to slash like a blade. The result spoke for itself. He struck true, tearing into his foe's chest, slashing through his so-called defenses as though they weren't even there. Golden blood flew through the air to splash across his cheek. Huh, so that's what our blood looks like now. Can't say I approve. I prefer mine to run red. Adam dropped to a knee and clutched at his wound, snarling into the clouds. 
Naruto looked to Sarah. We good? I think he's done. Never. The first man righted himself with a snarl. I didn't hear no bell, bastard. Well, all right. He shrugged his shoulder. If you say so. He didn't give him a chance to catch his breath and lunged in, wings propelling him forward at speed. Unprepared for the sudden burst, Adam couldn't quite escape in time. He caught him by the face, fingers biting down into his helm, only for his foe to flare his wings and fly free. Not so his mask. Unable to escape with its master, it was left behind, dangling from his hand. Huh. He gave it a shake and squinted at the angel's face. So that's what you look like without this. Too edgy. He flung it down at his feet. Pick it up. Much to his surprise, Adam didn't, which gave him a prime view of the rage, twisting his face. You think you're better than me? He slashed his axe forward in an arc of holy light, trying to cut him in half. That your tough shit, huh? Not really, no. He batted the blast aside into the sky and righted himself, wings flaring behind him. But you, you're all brute force. You're lacking so many things, you know? He darted in and gave himself over to his new body, moving on instinct. A blistering roundhouse. You lack discipline. Palm thrust. Control. Good punch. And worst, discombobulate. He slammed both hands down on Adam's ears, leaving him reeling. You're sloppy. He finished with a scowl as the angel slumped down before him, wasted and gasping for air. Anyone can see it. When was the last time you actually trained? That's enough. Sarah raised a hand. Adam yields. No. Much to his annoyance, said Angel punched the clouds and wobbled his way upright, swaying drunkenly on his feet. I ain't. Done. Not yet. A small flick of sympathy kicked at Naruto's heart. Yes, you are. Adam lunged at him like a feral dog, teeth bared. Zero, zero, zero. This wasn't happening. He was Adam, the original man. Winning was what he did, every day. He didn't lose, but he was losing. Here and now, he found himself being beaten, battered, butchered within an inch of his life. Naruto caught his weapon in his left hand and crushed it in his fist. Not so the punch that followed. He took that one like champ. He'd give him that. His eyes widened in momentary surprise as his head snapped to the side, right until he turned his face in against the fist, uncaring of the clenched knuckles currently denting his cheek. His smile returned tenfold. Something curdled deep within Adam's soul. He'd never felt the like before. Was this fear? All the work for a drop of blood. Naruto wiped a thin bead of golden eye core from his lips with one hand and gripped his wrist with the other anchoring him in place. My turn now. It was at this moment that he knew. I fucked up. Aura. Clenched knuckles barreled into his jaw with a triumphant shout. Not just fists this time around, but those damn wings as well. Sarah's new seraphim was using them like extra limbs now, beating the tar out of him. There was no getting past them. He made the mistake of trying and soon learned his lesson. They were hard as steel and swift as lightning. How could someone move that fast with ten wings? It didn't make any sense. He tried to fight back, only to find himself battered left and right, up, down, and center. It never stopped. It just kept coming. Ordinarily, he would have made a joke about that, but he couldn't see straight, couldn't think, for all the pain and Ogo de Third McKeat stop. An awful thought occurred to him, just then, as he hurtled through the air. I'm not the bad guy here, am I? Every fiber of his being bridled at the very idea of it all. The stinking gall. No way. I'm Adam. The first man. There's no way. And then, quite suddenly, he had his answer. Zero, zero, zero. The final blow came not with a whisper, but a bang. Naruto blocked another savage attack from Adam. Met him halfway, raising Gan in hand, and smashed his signature technique down into the angel's chest. The result was a bit. Well, overkill, if he was being honest. He'd taken his chakra into account, really, he had. But in his haste to finish the fight, he'd forgotten about his newfound angelic power and the blessings that came with it. What followed was a snarling helix of light that tore into the first man's torso, eviscerated his body in a way he hadn't at all intended, and left him reeling back. As such, you, hot, bastard. Adam gurgled once, staggered forward, tried to grab him, and failed. 
His eyes rolled back in his head, and he collapsed like a house of cards at his feet. Golden blood oozed from his wounds to pool upon the clouds, staining them an ugly shade of yellow. Third time was the charm, as they say. His adversary did not rise again. Come to think of it, he didn't seem to be moving at all. Naruto winced a little, despite himself. Oops. A moment of silence followed. And then, Loot screamed. I fear neither man, nor woman, or beast. But that, that thing, it scares me. Pecking order. Will he live? I suppose that depends on the definition of the word. Must you be so flippant? This is hardly the time for jokes, Naruto, said Blonde clasped both hands behind his head. Would you believe me if I said I wasn't joking? He could feel Sarah's glare searing between his shoulders and summarily ignored it, alongside the tiny twinge of guilt he felt. Against all odds, Adam wasn't dead. Horribly wounded, seriously scarred, mostly maimed and probably wishing he was dead, mind you, but alive. They'd left the first man sprawled out on a cot in the infirmary. Heaven actually had one. Who knew? Under a ray of heavenly light and left him there to recover. He'd even deigned to heal him out of pity to keep him from dying outright. In theory, he should be fine, but the bastard wouldn't wake up from his coma. In truth, he wasn't sure if Adam was having some existential crisis, just being stubborn, or if some other factor was at play here. He suspected the former. Regardless, he unlikely to recover anytime soon, which brought them to there. Dilemma, as a T were. Suffering a defeat like that changes you. Sarah clasped both hands behind her back and turned away from the window to face him fully. His body may have recovered, but his mind, yeah, I get it. He ran a hand through his glowing hair. I messed up. That's on me. Indeed it is. She huffed. Do be careful next time. For Emily's sake, if not your own. She still hasn't stopped singing your praises, you know. She was trying to change the subject, and just this once, he let her. She clearly wasn't a fan of Adam and who was, but if she wanted to extend the proverbial olive branch, then far be it from him to stop her. You know, I don't think I've ever met anyone so. Pure. Sarah preened a little, unable to hide her smile. Indeed, she is the very embodiment of joy. Is she your daughter or your sister? I can't tell. Either way, you seem really fonder. Sarah's dark face flushed. She's family to me. Nothing else matters. All right, he held up his hands. Evasive answer. I won't pry. Adam mumbled something in his sleep. Naruto twitched. I gotta ask, though. He jabbed a thumb over his shoulder. Why show this jerk that much favoritism? Is he that big of a deal? She stood a little straighter under his gaze. He was the very first soul to ascend. It was his. The will of heaven. Don't give me that holier-than-thou crap. How did someone like him even get up here? You must know. Silence reigned supreme. You're kidding me. He balked at her, made incredulous by her muteness. I thought this guy, a hand waved to Adam's prone form, must have done something special to land a gig all the way up here, but you don't even know. Do you? I do not. The high seraphim gripped her wrist and looked away, glowing eyes nervously flicking to the right in an attempt to evade his gaze. Far be it from me to question the will of heaven. His brow furrowed. He'd never been a fan of blind obeisance or dogmatic dogma, even when he was alive. Really? Because I'm thinking we should be questioning everything. You mustn't. He didn't miss the sudden flash of panic as she pivoted back his way. Lude is already beside herself. The exorcists are demanding answers. Another question he just had to ask. Why are they even called that? Enough. Her wings flared and her halo brightened as she burst into the air, prompting a similar reaction from him. I understand your dislike of Adam. In that, I sympathize with you. He has few friends here, I will admit, but you cannot simply question everything here without consequence. Any more than you can strike someone down for opposing you. Was that what she thought he'd done? That his actions yesterday had been deliberate? How wrong she was. Sarah, his smile sharpened. If I meant to kill anyone here, I already would have. The ethereal glow around her wings brightened, and he mirrored her. For a moment, all of heaven seemed to hold its breath. Much to his surprise, Sarah backed down first. We mustn't fight amongst ourselves. She let her wings droop, the glow around her fading to a mere flicker of its former self as she returned to the ground. We're on the same side here. 
Surely you can see that? Were they? He shook his head. All I'm seeing here is a whole lot of confusion. Lucky for you, I'm one of the good guys. His piece said. He turned, flung open the door, and left her to her musings. Zero, zero, zero. She had to know. She wanted to know. She absolutely needed to know. What in the Allfather's name was he? The question nagged at Sarah for the rest of the day. It burned in her thoughts, churned at her conflicted soul, tore at her routine until it was all she could think of. It dominated her every waking moment. Paperwork was pointless. Food and drink tasted like ash in her mouth and her concentration. There could be no denying it. She just couldn't fuzz. Not like this. In all fairness, she would be the first to admit that this new seraphim, assuming he truly was one, had surpassed her initial expectations. It was a rare thing indeed for an mortal soul to become an angel, rarer still for one to ascend to seraphim. But to be reborn in heaven as one? That was nigh unheard of. Yet here he was. In less than a day, he'd already upset the natural order. Not even he had accomplished such. Mumbling under her breath, she took her thumb between her teeth and bit it softly, an old habit she'd had since she was but a fledgling, one she didn't dare show in public. What to do with him? What to do? Emily was quite fond of him, and admittedly, so was she in a sense. But the questions, 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 not even a week in heaven, and already he was beginning to poke and prod at the delicate piece here, to realize nothing was as it seemed. If he found a loose thread, he'd undoubtedly tug at it, in the hole. He rather reminded her of young Lucy back in the old days, full of life and light and love, but more than willing to throw down when pressed. She'd seen his power firsthand, a soul so powerful it made heaven itself dim momentarily in that. It frightened her. From that fear anxiety was born, and with it, kindling an old ember of worry she'd not experienced in Ian's. He might be beyond her. Dare she say an archangel? Not even Michael and the others had ever thrashed Adam so handily as Naruto had. But by that very logic, he deserved to be here. She'd read his list of deeds, the same list every soul had when they came to heaven, and found herself flummoxed for it. His accomplishments were long and lengthy. Frankly, his selfless career quite possibly made him one of, if not the most selfless soul she had ever met. And she was centuries old. If only he wouldn't question everything. Sweet father, what if he fell? Sarah could see it now. If a being of his level fell from the heavens. Why? Hell wouldn't simply revolt, it would rise. He would lead a legion to their doorstep, and no. No, she mustn't think of that. That way lay madness and paranoia. She refused to go down that road again. He must remain in heaven at all costs. But how to do that? How to assuage his questions? How to distract him? How? So? She looked up, startled to find the door open. She'd not heard it. So distracted was she? And there, standing within the archway, looking ever so concerned. Emily, have you seen Naruto? I haven't been able to find him all day. And just like that, the answer fell into Sarah's lap. Zero, zero, zero. Loot was lurking in the corridor. Naruto sensed the exorcist's seething presence long before he saw her. Her soul was a wild, tangled knot of conflicting emotions, a tightly wound spring ready to snap, preferably at him. He could have sensed her miles away with ease. He wasn't surprised to find her she lurking nearby. He would have done the same had she hurt one of his friends. Still didn't make it any less annoying, though. Karama would have said something witty just now. He missed him. Shaking his head, he readied himself and rounded the bend. Several things happened at once. First and foremost, the ambush. D. He snatched the exorcist's angelic spear by the shaft as it jabbed, tore his face, raised it, high and snapped it over his knee, drawing a gas from his would-be killer as they found themselves clutching a useless stick. Belatedly, he got a good look at loot then, or rather, what she was wearing. She donned a strange horn helm of some sort, the better to conceal her identity from prying eyes. Clever, but utterly ineffective. He knew it was her. Her emotions were an open book to him. Really? He casually tossed the business end of her broken spear over his shoulder. You actually thought this would work? Credit where it was due. Loot wasn't the sort to give up easily. She recovered and, 
rather than retreat in the face of adversity, committed fully. She flung the ruined shaft of her spear at him. A distraction. He smacked it aside with one wing. Yet in that moment she crossed the distance between them and threw a series of wild punches his way. Or perhaps she was trying to strangle him. Claw his eyes out? Either way, his opinion of her remained very much the same. Slow. Sloppy. Sunt. He intercepted one fist with an open palm and retaliated in kind with with a vicious roundhouse, driving clenched knuckles into her right eye. His attacker reeled. From there he drove a knee into her stomach to wind her, wrenched her arm down behind her back, and forced her to the ground. His free hand gripped her helmet, tore it aside, seized her by the hair, and kept her there, pressing her face into pristine white marble. She struggled fruitlessly to no avail. He held fast until she tuckered herself out. Only then did he deign to speak. Are you done? Lute wrenched her head back to glare at him. Here at last, he finally got a good look at her pale face. The stubborn set of her lips, her narrow, golden eyes, one of which was already beginning to bruise. Every fiber of her being radiated defiance. And he knew that if he were to let her go here and now, he'd gain an implacable enemy for life. On the other hand, do it then. She snarled at him, tears gleaming in her good eye. Kill me, just like you killed him. Was she that out of the loop? He scoffed. Adam's not dead, you dolt. All the fight drained out of her. He's not? Go have a look after this if you like. He shrugged one shoulder, but made no move to release her. I wasn't trying to kill him, you know? Now it was her turn to scoff. Bullshit. Loot, I mean it. Horseshit. Listen, you little... He leaned down until their foreheads touched and looked her square in the eye. You seem confused about a few things, so I'll tell you what I told Sarah. If I meant to kill your precious boyfriend, his eyes glowed gold, the very air warping around them. He would be dead already. He's not my... She tried to speak further and irritated. He clamped a hand round her mouth. She probably bit him for it. Of course she did. Seriously? What are you, Seven? He rolled his eyes and stared her down. No, never mind that. You think a raisin gan is scary? You've no idea. Have you ever seen what a raisin shuriken does to the body? She glared at him and refused to respond until his fingers bit into her cheeks, drawing a pained gasp from her. You haven't, have you? He gave her a good shake for emphasis. Pray that you never do. Only then did take his hand from her mouth and release her. Lute didn't so much rise as she did spring backward in her haste to get away from him. Please don't attack me again. He side-eyed her when it looked like she might summon another weapon. Her brow furrowed. You really weren't trying to kill him? Were you? No. Will he live? He shrugged a shoulder. Most likely. She clicked her tongue and looked aside with a snarl. Then I'm sorry. Lute most assuredly wasn't. Not entirely, but it was better than nothing, frankly. Are you? He didn't budge. Even when she glared at him. You could be less of a bitch about it. You. Her wings bridled for a moment then drooped as she tucked them back and behind her. Fine. You're right. I am? Wait. Why was he questioning this? She'd leave him be at this rate. Erm. Um, I mean, yes. He coughed into a fist. I am. And don't you forget it. Loot looked at him askance, still radiating quiet contempt. Don't expect me to get down on my knees for you, though. Why would I even want that? A thought occurred to him then, as he stared her down. Injuries aside... She looked much the same as she always did, but now that he looked, there was something about her halo and wings that seemed different since he'd last see her. Why is your halo black, anyway? It seems darker than before. Lute blinked. She blinked hard. By the father? You really are new, aren't you? He flared his wings in response. Thought that much was obvious. She palmed her face with a scowl. I can't believe you're in charge of us. I can't tell if the Almighty is laughing at me or not. You should know. Adam had certain responsibilities, duties you'll be expected to fulfill until he recovers. He didn't much like the sound of that. What kind of duties? I could tell you. She considered him for a long moment with a bitter smile, only to shake her head. But I think it'll be more painful for you to find out. She stomped away with a huff, leaving him scratching his head in exasperation. Why did he have the faintest feeling he was forgetting something? Zero, zero, zero. Charlie, my dear, I found a fascinating individual for your hotel. Alaster? Wait, you mean a guest? And they came willingly? 
O ye of little faith, say hello, my good fellow. No, don't mind him, he's shy. Call me that again, and I will stab you. Splendid. You and Nifty will get along swimmingly. Zero, zero, zero. Naruto exhaled slowly and stepped out onto the ledge. All of heaven lay below him. Glorious incandescent buildings spanning as far as the eye could see. His wings bridled below him, itching for action, and he flexed them with a wince. Surely this couldn't be that hard. He'd flown before in the past without wings. Surely it couldn't be that hard with them, right? Right. He had this. He could do this. No, he would do this. He took a deep breath and stepped off the ledge, spread his wings and cloud, face full of failure. Very much his fault. Marshalling his scattered thoughts, he righted himself with a groan and shook his head. Heat speared through his face as a few passerby laughed. He couldn't even blame them for it. What kind of angel couldn't fly? He could use his wings as limbs easily enough, so why couldn't he take the skies? And then it hit him, muscle memory. He knew how to punch and kick and wield his chakra. Those were all ingrained into his soul, but flight? He'd never had wings before, and now he did. It was like flexing a muscle he hadn't been aware of. In that case, once more he raised them and focused his willpower. His chakra was still very much intact, but there was more to it now. He could feel it. The chakra of the other-tailed beast thrumming through his angelic body. Or was he an angel at all? The wings and the halo, to say nothing of his new complexion, would say yes, but life was full of surprises. No, don't focus on that. Concentrate on the here and now. He closed his eyes and focused further, consciousness tunneling inward. Sand, balefire, water, lava, steam, acid, lightning, wrath, and soul-searing light forged from pure might. Each of his ten wings signified something a part of the tailed beast, which was grand. But where was Karama? Make no mistake, he didn't want to believe he was gone. More than anything, but all the facts pointed toward his demise. He couldn't be dead. He just couldn't. If there was an afterlife, then he was surely somewhere. SASK2, probably knowing his luck, he let his newfound appendages droop, trailing low to the clouds. Dropped down to his haunches now, took up a runner's crouch, and focused anew. Okay, new techniques. He'd need time to get a hold of them, let alone master them. But in the interim, if he understood that, then maybe he could finally fly? Naruto leaped up into the air, spread all ten of his wings, and his face met the clouds with a resounding thud. Again? Zero, zero, zero. Emily watched Naruto from afar. At this distance, heaven's newest seraphim looked harmless, just another angel among the clouds. His attack tore through Adam's defenses, sending him sprawling to the ground in a bloody heap. No, she shook her head banishing the frightful thought from her mind. He was good. She knew he was. She could sense the kindness in him, the selflessness that had first brought him to the pearly gates. Even now, in his frustrations with flight, he didn't last out at anyone he endowed with Thedoing. She watched, awestruck, as his ten wings burst back into life with a frustrated Sean, sending a shower of colorful lights, chakra, racing into the sky. They exploded their one after the other like dazzling fireworks, each of them drawing startled cries from those looking on from afar. It was glorious. Just the sight of it made her want to sing. Emily chirruped happily, unable to keep herself from clapping as the light show faded into showering sparks. Pretty. Naruto lowered his hands, face burning bright red. How long have you been standing there? She stepped out of hiding with a sheepish smile. Just a little while. Zero, zero, zero. Her smile said otherwise. Naruto knew it at a glance. She'd been watching him for some time now. He crept up the back of his neck all over again. It made a man feel proper and bast, you know? Don't worry, it's a problem we all have at first. Even Sarah wasn't born with the knowledge of flight. She settled in beside him with a happy chirrup. She had to learn from the seraphim before her. Just as she learned from the seraphim before her. Adam certainly didn't come into heaven knowing half of what he does now. Heh, that at least made him feel better. You won't try to kill like that again, will you? Her question was born not from anger or concern, but simple innocence. It hurt. He winced. 
I didn't mean to hurt him that badly. She blinked up at him, pure as the driven snow. You overestimated him? More like I underestimated myself. I see. Also, that was a very pretty light show earlier. He sputtered and flushed, smiling at her simple praise. Thanks. But if you'd like flying lessons, her hands closed around his shy and tentative. I can teach you how to fly, if you like. His face softened a little. He just couldn't help it when faced with someone so eager. I'd like that. Very much. Emily chirped happily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I promise I won't let you down. A look of pure and utter joy flashed across the smaller seraphim's face as she squealed happily and hopped in place. He couldn't quite explain what came over him in that moment. They were still holding hands. Perhaps that was it. Because for a singular blinding second, her joy was his joy. More than that, they were connected. It was too much. Far too much. Couldn't resist. Emily Yu's smile. It's super effective. Critical hit. Naruto fainted. You are here for a purpose. As are we all. I hope you find it someday. May they remember you. Clouds and cuddles. Was he dreaming? Because this felt like a dream. There was just one problem with said dream. Adam couldn't wake up. Oh. He wanted to make no mistake, but he couldn't. Instead, he found himself floating on his back, staring up at an empty white void. Couldn't do much more beyond that. Couldn't blink. Couldn't move. Couldn't even flex his wings. He could only stare and breathe. Angels usually didn't need to do the last one in heaven, but for some reason it felt like he had to. Weird Al. A jolt of pain racked his soul out of the blue, drawing a yelp from him. And with it came an all-too-familiar voice, echoing high above. Repent. Was that? It was. Oh, shit on a stick. He knew that voice. Adam tried to smile. Instead, grimace wrought his face. H.A. Big Guy. Long time no see. How's the vacuation? A fresh paroxysm of agony shook his soul from head to toe, rendering the last word a reedy cry. Repent. Gah. He tried to look away, but it was no use. His soul wouldn't stop convulsing. What the shit was that for? Repent. For what? You know all the reason. Adam had an inkling, and it pissed him off. What? You wanted to say sorry to that whiskered bastard. Just thinking of it pissed him off. Hey, no. I didn't do anything wrong. That misguided belief is why you have fallen so far. Now repent. Dozens of fire ants burned through his veins. Not a chance. Repent. He gnashed his teeth, riding out another spasm. Stop. Just stop, all right? Just like that, his tormentor paused. You gave your word, did you not? I didn't think that blonde bastard would actually win, okay? So you had no intention of honoring you promise? He winced. Well, when you put it like that. Such is why you must repent, Adam. Hey, Erga. The pain ceased, leaving the first man wasted and gasping for air. Why are you doing this? Because my boy, you have become a bully since last we spoke. Bullies need to know they can be punished too. Now, repent. An almighty shadow fell over him, their face burning so bright that Adam couldn't bring himself to look them in the eye. His own bulged anyway as a glowing hand settled atop his forehead. Almost immediately, he felt an all too familiar pressure squeeze against his temples like an iron vice clamping down against his skull. The agony that followed was unlikely any other. It broke through his defenses as though they weren't even there. Pain didn't even begin to describe what followed. Now just hold on. W.B. wait a second. Can we talk Abbey Away Award? His pain shrieks of torment echoed into the void. A single word overtook them. Just the one. Repent. Zero, zero, zero. One month passed. For weeks. 28 days. Naruto meticulously kept track of each one, if only because it helped him stay sane. Among other things, flight was a novel thing with wings, but as with all things, he resolved to master it. And he had given time. Emily had been an absolute godsend in that regard. Adam's so-called exorcists. Not so much. Even now, a month after the fact, Loot and most of the other girls still bridled at the notion of working under him. Even more so, as it became abundantly clear that Adam wouldn't wake up. They were keeping something from him. He just knew it. But whatever it was, they'd evidently been sworn to silence. That, 
or Lute was just being a colossal bitch about it. Meh. Probably the latter. Settling into the afterlife when you were, well, dead was easier than it sounded. At times, he almost found himself forgetting he'd died at all, only to catch sight of himself in the mirror or in a nearby building, and then he'd be right back at square one again. He still found himself balking sometimes at it. Everyone thinks they're immortal. Until they aren't. Speaking of immortal and mortal beings, he could sense the former glaring his way now. That'll be all for today, ladies. He dismissed them with an absent wave. No more drills. Get some rest. A few nodded. One or two even bowed. The rest scoffed or flipped him the bird as they left. He couldn't particularly bring himself to care. Not after he'd driven them to the point of exhaustion. Adam had been sloppy in his training. No surprise there. The man was a pig, and he drilled some awful habits and mannerisms into these girls, much of which he found himself forced to undo. If that meant breaking down these so-called exorcists and rebuilding them from the bottom up, then so be it. Turning his back on on them, he considered the clouds and the sun above. Heaven had so many things he didn't understand. The loot and her exorcists were but one small facet of the greater who. Sure, this place was nice, the buildings looked great and all, but it just felt so. Beyond him, at times, some of these souls even had things called cell phones. What the heck was a cell phones? Bah! So confusing. How was a man to make sense of it all? Irritated by his thoughts, he flared his wings and burst into the sky. Flying was still. Difficult if he was entirely honest with himself, but at least he needn't fear crashing anymore. It's just a matter of instinct. Emily's innocent giggle filled his mind with a memory. Don't worry. You'll figure it out sooner or later. His face burned. He soared higher to free himself from such thoughts. But to the higher he went, the more those human cares fell away. He liked this place. Up here it was calm, peaceful, downright soothing really. Maybe it wasn't so bad being dead after all. Like hell it wasn't. Naruto recoiled from that foreign thought and snapped his wings out, cutting his ascent short. He shook his head violently, vaguely aware of a distant ringing in his ears. Where had that come from? Was this place messing with his mind? Had to be. The higher he went, the worse it became. So much so that he found himself turning away from the upper levels of heaven and gliding back the way he'd come. He needed to get some air, proper air. Real air not whatever this was. Descending, he plunked down upon one of the lower clouds. And with it, he felt his emotions return. This close to the pearly gates. That surreal calm seemed nothing more than a distant memory or a bad dream. Except it wasn't now, was it? He knew what he'd experienced. He'd sensed something up there, something strong, something powerful enough to affect even his emotions. What in blazes was hiding all the way up there, and why did the thought make him shiver? Karama would know the answer. He always knew these things. His absence pained him. Sprawling out amidst the clouds, he sighed, draping an arm over his eyes. It wasn't long before a shadow fell over him. Did you crash again? Nardo moved his arm and creaked an eye open. Sneaky little angel. He hadn't heard her coming. Didn't crash, he muttered under his breath. Just thinking. Emily leaned closer, hands on her knees as she regarded him intently. What about? Recognizing the unspoken inquiry for what it was, he sat up and scooted over, making way for her, idly rubbing his head. She noticed at once, bless her simple soul. You're not feeling well, are you? What's wrong? Head hurts, he grunted. I'm fine. His fellow seraphim perked up. I can help. Could she now? He doubted that, but was willing to humor her. He arched an eyebrow. Unless you're a healer, I very much doubt. Emily patted her knees with both hands, and his argument died, an ugly death in his throat. Just come here. She waved him down eagerly, less of a command and more of a plea. Let me help. He dithered. Please? Irk. Reluctantly, he scooted closer and lowered his head, letting her tentatively guide him in her lap until he was resting the back of his head against her thighs. It felt nice, surprisingly soft. He couldn't remember the last time he'd done something like this. Emily laid a dusky hand upon his forehead, light as a feather's brush. Close your eyes. Why not? He complied on a whim and did as she asked, only because she asked. Had it been a command, he would have refused her on principle. 
What was that noise? He could clearly hear something, but he couldn't put his finger on it. Music? No way he told a lie. Not quite music, but neither could he call it words either. It was like something trapped somewhere between the two, like a tale as old as time, or a song old as rhyme. A wordless tune that settled over his soul like a fine shroud, lulling him to sleep. What was the word for that? Ah, he had it now. Lullaby. This was a lullaby. It brought him, dare he say peace? Not that awful artificial feeling he'd experienced when trying to reach the upper levels of heaven, but proper peace. He felt a hand run through his hair, gently teasing out the knots there, stroking his scalp with delicate ease and care. He flushed suddenly and incredibly aware of the intimate position he was in, yet his eyes were drooping all the same. In no time at all, found himself drifting off. Do not worry. A voice spoke to him in that moment, unseen, unknowable, and unfathomable. Everything will be all right. Soon you will see. You were brought here for a reason. You'll save them all, both above and below. Naruto sat up with a jolt, but the voice was gone, taking his migraine with it. Phew! Emily heaved a sigh and wiped a bead of sweat from her brow, utterly unaware of what he'd just experienced. That always takes a lot out of me. Her wings drooped a little as he looked on. Did you like it? I hope that helped. He found himself stricken into gobsmacked silence. Emily kept staring, spurring him into action. Did you hear a voice? Just now? Sorry. She seemed to shrink in on herself, misunderstanding him. I know. I'm not very good. Not good. He seized her hands in his and yanked them close. If that's what you call bad, then your best must be out of this world. Why was her face so red? If there's no need to flatter me. She sputtered out, Sarah sings better than I, and didn't ask about her. He cut her off with a huff. In this moment, his mind didn't even conceive of the prudish older angel or anything about her. I was talking about you. So, huh? Sarah who? Sarah was nobody. Every fiber of his being remained focused upon the innocent and growing increasingly red angel sitting before him. Emily? Emily squeaked and looked away. Her gaze flitted this way and that, eyes unable to meet his for some reason. I'm flattered, really. By the log. She was just so small. Or perhaps he was simply too tall in this form. Regardless, whenever he found himself looking at her these days, he found himself stricken by a strong urge to keep her safe, to shield her at all costs. It was foolish he knew. She didn't need his condescension. She wasn't a child to protect. He knew she'd be angry if he said so. She might not look it, but she was older than him after all. A thought occurred to him suddenly, striking out of the blue. Nardo pounced on it. Do you ever leave heaven? No. She blinked, flush fading for a moment. Why would we? We already have everything we need here. On that he disagreed. This heaven didn't have what he needed. It might never, for that matter. Well, that just sounds silly, doesn't it? He said, angels should be out saving people not staying cooped up in here. Liar. As far as excuses went, it was a poor one. He just wanted out. Only for a little while. Just enough to clear his head. You know? And yet Emily considered it. I suppose you have a point. She touched a finger to her chin. I've never thought about it that way before. Maybe you could ask Sarah. Why not? He needed to talk to her anyway. Sure. Maybe I can show you around where I grew up. Assuming it still existed. There was no way of telling if this was his afterlife, after all. Nevertheless, his words had Emily perking up. Really? You promise? He puffed out his chest. I never go back on my word, you know. The little seraphim grinned at that and absolutely froze. Emily? He poked her cheek. Eh? Emmy? You good? Abruptly, she moved. Eh? Emily made happy Emily noises and tackled him with a squeal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds great. I can't wait. A bell chimed somewhere high above, unseen somewhere in the clouds, cutting off her happy exclamations, causing her to look up. Oh, that's for me. She flared her wings and took flight, releasing him. I'll see you later. Let me know how the talk with Sarah goes. He couldn't help but wave her way. She was just too pure for her own good. I will. See you around. Emily paused suddenly, dithered for a moment seemed to consider something. Without warning, she darted back, quick as a sparrow in flight. Mwah! 
In that instant, he comprehended several things at once, warm, soft, light as a feather's touch, and innocence's first blush, lingering against his cheek, her face so close to his, cheeks dusted with pink. Thank you. Emily whispered to his ears, and his ears alone, for the compliment. He barely had time to comprehend it. Then she was gone, whisking away over the clouds. He touched a hand to his cheek. Huh, are you that easily led? He looked back over his shoulder, nonplussed to find a certain veilleur perched on a nearby cloud. Of course she was watching him. Why do you want loot? He pivoted to face her with a scowl. To see me suffer? Is that it? Is that what you people do for fun up here? In response, Lute began to remove her shirt. When he was alive, he might panicked. Even now, he felt a fierce flare of surprise. But it was muted, distant. What the hell are you doing? Having fun. He didn't miss the spiteful sparkle in her eyes. Cut the crap. He slashed a hand out before she could finish. There are other ways to do that. Really? We're not prudes up here. He growled, and she grinned in return. Fine. I was only joking anyway. Her head tilted suddenly, her smile gaining a vicious edge. Have you solved the little mystery I gave you? Yet? He hadn't, and they both knew that for a fact. I'm close. Then let me pull the wool off your eyes, Captain. She leaned in and whispered into his ear. Ever heard of Extermination Day? His eyes widened. What's that? Lute told him. I've got people to protect. Friends I can't neglect. So I'm not taking chances here. You've made your one wrong move. Now you're done for. I will be the one to prove that you're done for. Not even a prayer saves you now. Cause you're done for. Oh, you better run. Or soon those wings will be done for. One wrong move. Extermination day. Extermination. Day. Naruto stumbled through the empty halls. Words ringing in his head like a bell as he staggered along. He could still hear them. Over and over. Louder and louder. Every word. Every soul. Every syllable etched into his head with painstakingly clarity. A haunting tale he'd never be able to forget. The very theory of extermination day sounded terrible enough on paper, but the explanation that followed, the words loot told him, proved so much worse. Even now, they haunted him. Once a year, exorcists, angels, descending to hell and killing every soul in sight. A full 24 hours of pain and torture and torment and death. Senseless slaughter. Sickening savagery. Spiteful slaying. He wasn't satisfied with just her word, of course. People lied all the time, even angels. For all he knew, heaven had a way of getting past his negative emotion sensing or some such. This place was already affecting him in some ways. Who knew what else it might do? And so he had asked, demanded more questions of her until he knew everything, not just the yearly exterminations, but Adam's part in them and the one who ordered it all. In hindsight, he really shouldn't have pried. Ignorance was bliss, something he should have clung to. It wasn't possible anymore, because now he knew the truth, and the truth had set him free. The worst part about it all? Loot was telling the truth. At the end of the day, Adam's second-in-command genuinely believed she was doing good by committing genocide. In her twisted soul, she thought this was her duty, that all those who dwelt below heaven deserved to die. Unacceptable. Oh. He knew Lute was trying to play him in other ways, make no mistake. Telling him this wasn't just for the sole purpose of inflicting pain. She probably sought to spur him into action, egging him on in the hope that he would fly off the handle again and do something foolish. Oh yes. He knew. But it didn't change the facts. Lute's voice taunted him even now. The next extermination is in six months. Can you live with that knowledge? She was right. He couldn't. Unacceptable. He'd been on the war path ever since. The first step was loot herself. He knocked that smug bitch out, tied her down, and locked her up. The second step came in the form of the exorcists. It took less than an hour to gather all of Adam's followers together under the pretense of a meeting. From there, he asked them what they thought of Extermination Day. Their answers had proven. Enlightening. Of the 100 exorcists currently on active duty, only four girls expressed anything less than complete and utter devotion to Adam's cause. The rest gleefully looked forward to the next E-Day, as they called it. Some were even keen on moving up the timetable to twice a year at that. For voices of dissent. Amongst 100, 
Those four, he excused, idly resolving to ask their names at a later date. As to the rest, diplomacy failed. He'd be lying if he said he wasn't disappointed in them, or himself, for what he did next. In the end, he did what he did best. He beat his enemies half to death, gave them a stern talking to, and strung them in the square for all of heaven to see until they changed their minds. Broken bones, mangled muscles, warped wings, you name it, he did it. They wouldn't recover for months, if not longer, which gave him more time to plan his next move. The third step proved a bit more cowardly on his part, in that it involved him staunchly and absolutely avoiding Emily until he got this settled and sorted. He didn't think he could face her as he was now. Hopefully she wasn't a part of this. She couldn't be, right? She mustn't be. But if she was, no, don't think about that. As for the fourth and final step that awaited him here and now, his legs had carried him to his final destination. Good. To his credit, Naruto didn't hesitate for long. A quick breath to marshal his anger. Nothing more. All right. Stealing himself, he reared back, raised his right leg, and his shoe met door with an awful crunch. The latter yielded. Loudly. So, uh, the head seraphim jolted to her feet from behind her desk with a stricken look on her face, gasping as the door to her office crashed open. All but tearing free from its hinges, he knew how he must appear to her, face carved from stone, all traces of light and levity gone, concealed behind a stern mask of anger. Gone was his once sunny smile. In its place stood a stern scowl bordering on an outright sneer. His once blue eyes burned a molten shade of gold, warping the very air around him. Was she angry at him? Was she afraid? Was she going to try and talk him around? Too bad. He already knew his answer. Tough. Naruto. Sarah forced a smile to her face, when in truth, he could see she very much wanted to fly away. You've been busy, I see. To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? Funny you should mention that. He stalked forward and planted a hand on her desk. I've been busy, because little Birdie just told me about a fascinating holiday we have up here. Her shoulders drooped a little. And what holiday is that? Extermination Day. Sarah's smile died an ugly death as her wings slammed down behind her. Not good. As he looked on, she drew herself upright, looming large over him, silvery eyes blazing into his gold. Naruto lifted his chin and bristled in return, ready to defend himself should she attack. Would it come to a fight? He wasn't certain. Could he win? Maybe. Sarah was clearly a cut above Adam. But then again, he didn't rightly know how powerful he'd become himself since his death. His body felt so damn powerful right now, but she could easily be his match for all he knew. In any case, he wouldn't be the one to throw the first punch. Not here. Was that Lute's plan? Piss him off, make him kickstart a fight with Sarah, then get him kicked out of heaven? Clever girl. Something ugly curdled in his chest. It almost felt like respect. Were he alive, he might have fallen for it. Sarah sighed suddenly, drawing his attention back to her. You are, quite possibly, the most exasperating angel I've ever met. Thanks. It wasn't a compliment. She sank back in her seat with a huff. Please, won't you sit? He crossed both arms before his chest, wings twitching at his back. I'll stand if it's all the same to you. Very well. Who told you of this? Loot? No, don't answer. She waved him down before he could get a word in edgewise. Of course she did. That girl seems determined to make you fall. His brow furrowed in momentary confusion. Fall? Sarah looked away, unable to meet his gaze. It is the fate of an angel who does. Disreputable things. No, no, no. He wasn't letting her wriggle out of this. You mean like Adam? Oh, wait. He snapped his fingers. He hasn't fallen, has he? So, why would I for asking about extermination day? Sarah pinched the bridge of nose, closed her eyes, and heaved a long, suffering sigh. Why must you be this way? Questioning everything, upsetting the natural order of things. It's not like me to leave things be if something's wrong. It's human nature. You're not human. She sprang to her feet, tiara glowing, wings flaring as she shouted at him distress bleeding through her facade at long last. Neither of us are. We command legions, possess powers that would make mortals quake, and with great power comes great responsibility. We must be better than those who have come before us. 
silence stretched between them, fit to strange them both. Naruto stood his ground. Answer my questions and we can be. Did you sanction this? He didn't hate Sarah, but he wasn't exactly her biggest fawn right now either. Her response here hinged on how he would treat her in the future. And so he waited. Until she looked away. Something cracked deep in his chest at that. It felt like his soul. You did, didn't you? All those people. Sarah glanced at him out the corner of her eye. Hell was an open revolt. We had have no choice. Flimsy argument remained flimsy. Last I checked, there wasn't an army at our gates. So someone's lying. He tilted his head and made a shushing noise when she tried to interrupt. Tell me, who exactly told you hell was up in arms in the first place? Sarah tried, but subsequently failed to hit her wince. A thumb. Right, right. He thumbed his chin. And I'm guessing he was all for this extermination of yours. Sarah bit her lip. Did you ever go down there yourself to confirm his words? The silence was her answer. You allow extermination day to happen, and you've never been down there in person. His hands clenched in a fist at his sides. I'm sorry, you want to run the shit by me again? Otherwise, all of heaven dimmed around him anew, more than ever before. I got might get the wrong idea, you know? Fury bubbled up in him. Not a wrenching rage as one might expect, but something altogether colder. Oh, he was still angry, downright livid. But it was a F.A. cry from the seething tempest Adam had unwittingly ignited in his idiocy. This was different. Cold. Arctic. Glacial. For a moment, just a moment, it felt like his very soul was frozen solid. A sliver of ice. Such was the frigid fury within. Huh. A small, rational part of him mused, I think this place might be affecting my emotions. He took a deep breath and let it go, releasing it now in a plume of frigid steam. All right, he exhaled softly. I've had enough. Then he moved. His right hand settled on Sarah's desk and ripped it aside, casting it into a wall with a sonorous crash. She recoiled, but he had no pity left in his heart to be moved by such a sound. He didn't miss a beat and waded through the mess it made, finger jabbing forward in accusation like some glowing dagger. Sarah shrank back from it as much as him. What are you doing? Naruto pressed his advantage, even as anger festered in his chest. You're killing countless souls on the off chance they might revolt again, tarring them all with the same brush. Can't say I agree with that. Hell is full of monsters and madmen. Can't you see why I'm doing this? The older Seraphim flung out an arm to ward him off, or perhaps she feared an attack. He wasn't sure which. I've got people to protect. Souls I can't neglect. So I'm not taking chances here. Her brow furrowed when he didn't budge. Make no mistake, if you make one wrong move, you're done for. Enough! His wings flared, cutting her off with a rush of wind. In the silence that followed, no one dared breathe. Until he took the initiative. Me. You made your one wrong move. He shouted over her, voice rising to stifle her shout as much as the momentary gale he'd summoned. Now you're done for. His finger drilled in, jabbing her ribs, causing her to retreat with a yelp. I will be the one to prove that you're done for. Not even a prayer is going to save you now. Because you're done for. You better not run, or soon those wings will be done for. Sarah glared back at him, defiant, unrepentant, chin jutting out furiously, a myriad mess of eyes glowing in her hair as she snapped back. These souls are like my children. I must protect them at all costs. Up came her hand between her breasts, eyes blazing. The last time I failed in my duty, heaven faced a heavy loss. I just want to protect my people with this fragile peace we have. Still better to save than to stab. She rolled her eyes and scoffed. I do what is required. He sucked in a sharp breath, offended. To think that Emily admired you. That took the wind right out of her sails. For Sarah made a pained noise of panic. You mustn't tell her about this. Huh. Her panic was all too real. Emily might not be a part of Sarah's scheme after all. He filed her reaction away for later. Mustn't I? He snapped back, feigning ignorance instead. Are we done with our little rhyme session now? Or were we singing? This is no laughing matter. No laughing matter? Her words were admirable, but misguided. No, foolish, even. Couldn't she see what she was doing here? Naruto shook his head. 
I think it's laughable that you're confusing peace with quiet. No matter how hard you try, the rest of heaven will find out. You've gotten lucky so far, but this isn't the kind of secret that can last forever. People will find out about this. A guilty conscience, loose lips, or a redeemed soul. It doesn't matter how long it takes because it will happen. The head seraphim squinted at him. What are you proposing? He scoffed at her, stamping down on his anger. They're going to find out sooner or later. All you can do is make sure they can understand. Without turning them into zealots. You need to tell them yourself before they find out on their own. In the meantime, I'm going down there. Sera blanked. Down where? He smirked. Where do you think? She balked. You want to visit hell? Are you mad? Naruto winked. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then, see you in next video.